The following content has been provided by RWTH Aachen University. Um, now, using STNs and prototyping, uh, it's fairly easy. The, the first approach, if you want to use an STN in, in prototyping, uh, you can do the following. You can say, OK, I've got a couple dialogues that I'm thinking about putting into my, my system. This is how I imagine the interaction to happen. And then you basically just draw an STN for each of those uh, states. Um, and the STN basically has one state per dialogue. Right? So from dialogue to dialogue, you have uh, those transitions that uh, happen because the user does something. Um, this can be done, for example, if you have a, a flipbook. Let's say you have a flipbook where you have all the various states of your interface documented, and you want to have a little second document that tells you how to move through that flipbook so you know which go, you know, page goes where. Um, so the state transition network would tell you how to operate the flipbook, basically. It's the logic, the interaction logic behind your interface that's documented in, the, in your paper prototype. Um, it makes a lot of sense to label your, your, your um, sketches of your interface with maybe little state names. So you name them like we did here in the conducting or in the, um, uh, in the silhouettes example. When you do so, it often helps to have, um, in your flipbook, for example, to have a little part where you show the interface and then have some part outside that where you put additional information, like stuff where you say, um, if the user does this, then we go to this other state, or simulating external things that happen, like uh, the user picking up the baton, for example. When you then want to walk the user through your paper prototype, you basically have the SDN as a, as a little cheat sheet to tell you where to go. And you can write the SDN as a separate graph, um, and you can even then copy the instructions of the transitions into your flipbook and use them directly there. So notice this concept of, I, I like to call them meta buttons, right? There are buttons in your prototype, and then there are buttons outside your prototype that basically say, if the user does this, like pick up the baton or leave the exhibit or, or you know, something happens, uh, those are external events that will influence also what happens to your prototype, which aren't represented by buttons in the interface or any other controls in the interface. An alternative is, um, to having a paper prototype and running the prototypes yourself by following the STN is to actually have the computer execute the STN to run the prototype. You can use tools like Keynote or PowerPoint for that. Um, I'll show you here a, a really old example that's uh, taken from the uh, accompanying materials to uh, the book from Dix uh, that is using um, a hypercard stack. Hypercard is basically also a kind of presentation software where you can um, put pages that then are being linked to each other via uh, buttons that you click on. It's kind of a predecessor of Flash, and given that even Flash is dead now, that's, you can see how old HyperCard is. Um, but that's not the point. Um, I just want to show you the example here. Um, let me switch over. So here's our uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, STN that we're looking at. And here we have the hypercard stack running. Okay. Kind of like this. I'm going to move this, make this a little smaller maybe. So if you can still see that. Okay. So um, this here is running an old version of Mac OS in, its, in an emulator called VMAC. Inside VMAC is running this old application hypercard that is showing this, uh, this example, this example of the drawing tool. Um, so this is really, this is not a drawing application that we're, we have here. It's a series of pages that we're going through. And you can see here is the uh, area that is our, if you like, paper prototype. In this case, it's computer drawn, but it's a paper prototype um, showing you the design of our awesome drawing program with the graphics menu, text menu, and paint menu, just like those three graphics, text, and paint submenus here. Um, and we are currently in the state of main menu, right? So we're currently in this main menu state up here uh, that we're looking at in the state diagram. So what can we do now? Um, 
Well, we could step through the pages of this document one at a time, but that's not really useful. That's like going forward and backward in a, in a PowerPoint presentation. We want to use the buttons that are built into this PowerPoint, uh, into this uh, HyperCard prototype to simulate the interactions. So what am I going to do? I'm going to um, click on the graphics menu here. And when I do that, a couple things happen. The graphics menu pops out. So we're now in the, uh, we picked graphics, so we're now in this submenu here, which is basically uh, this part here, this whole part to the right. Um, and we now have a choice of a circle or a line menu item, which are these two choices here in our state transition network. Uh, and you can see the current state is called graphics menu. Let me, uh, I don't know, pick the circle menu. So I click on circle. And again, this is just a button in a presentation, right? This is not really a working menu. Uh, it's just drawn that way. <coughs> now something happened. Um, the menu disappeared, obviously, and we're now in state circle one, which is exactly this one over here. Um, now we've, we're in trouble, because our little PowerPoint hypercard presentation can't really let us draw graphics, right? So we need to simulate that, that somehow. So what this tool does is it says, well, um, click this button outside the prototype. This is an external event that we're simulating here to simulate that the mouse has selected something in the drawing area. Mm -hmm. right? Since we can't really draw with the mouse in this drawing area because it's just you know, uh, a PowerPoint presentation. Um, so I click here. And now we've stepped to the next state, circle two, right, which is up there. Um, so we've now basically defined the center of the circle. And if I click again, then that simulates me clicking with the mouse button right here to define the outer edge of the circle. So let me do that again. Um, then I've drawn the circle, right? That's what the system does as a result. It draws the circle. That's the feedback here. Now we are finished with the submenu uh, state which would bring us back to the exit out of this graphics submenu here, which would then take us back to the main menu state. So the next thing that we get to is when we end the substate, that we go back to the main menu. Again, this is the instructions here that are outside our actual prototype simulation. So we've drawn a circle. Awesome. Question to see whether you got this. What happens if I press this end of substate menu button? Which state do I go back to? If you go to main menu, and I think the circle will go away because you will start from the beginning. Exactly. That's important to understand. We go to main menu, and the circle disappears. Because we haven't really drawn a circle. We've just shown you a couple of screenshots. Right? So that's important to get here. We're back at the main menu state, just where we started when we began this demo. All right. So this is an example how you can use something like PowerPoint or this uh, older HyperCard tool or really any kind of thing that lets you show screenshots or, or drawn pictures or photos or whatever and put active areas into them, buttons, whatever, to move from uh, one to, to the other right? and to network them that way. Okay, so back to our presentation. That was that. Uh, you may remember that I showed you this, this other example here of the um, website of the computer science department that I did this mock-up for. Again, done with the computer, but tried not to look too uh, precise, too finished yet, more giving it a, a rough look. And here we also have a way of interacting with it in a nonlinear fashion. I could step through all the pages in the keynote presentation that are lined up here in my next couple pages, um, but instead I'm going to use the buttons in here. So I can, for example, click on uh, this button here, Wirtschaft, so to see what you know, we want to um, offer our, our partners in, econ in industry. And we see this stuff coming up. And so that's another page in this thing uh, that is being displayed. I can go to another one over here, or I can go over to this one. Um, and here, this is the only one that is fleshed out a little more. I can even click on some things here, see what kind of stuff appears here. Uh, I can go back to this one over here. Um, and so all of these are kind of like a real menu, like a real website, showing you 
um, be allowing me to pitch the idea of the website um, to other people. And that's what I used when I proposed our you know, design to the other faculty members and said, hey, do you guys like this? Um, is this the way that we should make the website look? Um, so this is two examples of how you can use STNs, um, state transition networks, to basically capture how your prototype, especially your paper prototype that isn't really functional yet, or your screenshot prototype that isn't really functional yet, how it is supposed to work and how it's supposed to step from one to the other. This content was provided by RWTH, Aachen University.